First, though, Canada has announced more sanctions against Iranian regime, regime officials and entities connected to it. But it's still falling short on what many activists are calling for, designating the entire Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps a terrorist group. Today, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau addressed that. We are looking and continuing to look at all ways to ensure uh, that the Iranian regime knows that its continued reprehensible behavior is absolutely unacceptable. The CBC's Ashley Burke has been tracking this story. So, Ashley, more sanctions on regime officials, but one in particular is worth a closer look. What can you tell us about that? David, there was um, the, the Canada has sanctioned a high-profile former police chief in Tehran, who was also a former military commander for Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, and they are uh, sanctioning him for gross and systemic human rights violations that they say he committed in Iran. His name is Morteza Talai, and he was in charge of the police force back in 2003, and that's when there was an Iranian Canadian uh, photojournalist who was arrested after taking photos outside of a prison when there were students who were being detained and there were protests over that. And she was killed while in police custody. Um, in Iran, the authorities there had said that it was accidental, but a physician, attending physician who fled to Canada came out and said that there were signs from her that there was uh, rape, torture and head trauma before her death of Zara Kazemi. Now, Iranian Canadians were outraged this year to learn that he was seen in Canada. There was photos that surfaced online uh, in January that an Iranian journalist had posted a photo and video of him walking on a treadmill in a Toronto area gym. And this raised uh, a series of concerns from the Iranian Canadian diaspora about how he was able to come to Canada, including allegations that Canada was a safe haven for regime members and their relatives especially in light of the fact that when in 2006 when he was with the Iran's, uh, Iran's police chief at that time he was involved uh, with a, a unit that was specifically designated uh, to uh, to crack down on women who were not properly wearing their hijabs under the law at that time so it was a main sort of example that people here in Canada were using uh, to say to the government look at you need to do more Okay, the Iranian-Canadian community, as you said, has for years warned about regime officials and their families here in Canada. What can you share on that front? David, CSIS has confirmed to us that it is actively investigating multiple death threats uh, from Iran against people who are here in Canada. We know that Iran's regime has had a long history of targeting dissidents abroad, so those who are critical and oppose the regime. And this dates back to assassinations and killings uh, that are well documented in the 80s and 90s. And there are real concerns from people in the Iranian-Canadian diaspora who have spoken out that they are being sort Veiled, that they are be mo being monitored here in Canada. There was a plot last year that the FBI uh, stopped and laid charges in connection to kidnapping a U.S. Uh, based journalist and activist, as well as three Canadians, uh, Canadian, three people that were here in Canada. And we know that um, people here are also concerned about uh, regime members potentially and their relatives potentially living in the country, living lavish lifestyles, buying up property and having assets here, and that's something they've long complained to the government about. The government's now under uh, immense political pressure to take a tougher stance from the community, but also from the Conservatives, and they've been listing for weeks now a number of sanctions against different individuals, and also uh, earlier this month they listed Iran, a uh, designated Iran for the first time uh, as a country that has um, engaged in terrorism and systemic human, systemic human rights violations, which, which they say will ban thousands of people, including top regime members and IRGC members, from entering Canada, uh, and as well that they could extend to relatives who are potentially here in the country, including revoking their permanent residency. Okay. Ashley, thank you so much. The CBC's Ashley Burke, live tonight in Ottawa.